Namaskar. My name is Biswajit Banerjee and it is such an honor to be your trainer in this video. In our last video, we covered individual household toilets. In this training video, we will talk about the community toilet. And as has been the case before, there shall be a quiz in the end to reinforce your learning. So, let's get started with the training program. Around 20% of the population in urban areas defecate in the open. That's a large chunk of the population. You would appreciate that this constitutes major health hazards. So wherever individual toilets cannot be provided, community toilets can fill up the gap of providing access to safe sanitation. A community toilet, as is evident from the name, is a toilet that is used by members of a community that resides in the vicinity of the toilet blocks. It is meant for a static population, a known and well-defined group of people. A community toilet is usually built in blocks. Each block consists of a number of toilet seats. We have to make sure that the common facilities include separate units for men, women and the differently abled and aged. Few cities have also taken the initiative for developing child-friendly toilets. A community toilet is built when an individual toilet for a household does not become feasible either due to paucity of space or financial reasons or some other reasons. Let's now talk about the beneficiaries of community toilets. Understandably, the beneficiaries happen to be those who for reasons already explained cannot have individual toilets of their own and as such have to defecate in the open. Besides, you would appreciate that community toilets are typically required in settlements where there is no space for constructing individual toilets. Further, they may also be required in areas where households cannot afford toilets of their own. There could also be instances where due to land tenural issues, regulations do not permit construction of toilets. Before construction of a community toilet structure, a thorough understanding of the community which would be using it is needed. Good planning is key to good community toilets. The factors that need to be taken into reckoning include gender proportions, social structures and community beliefs. The community toilet should not be more than 150 meters away from the beneficiaries supposed to use it so that it is hardly a two or three minute walk for them. It should also be constructed where it is easiest to connect an existing sewer line or has space for an on-site sanitation system. Also, the community toilets should be located in safe and highly visible places. Signage for toilets should appear at frequent intervals. The norms for deciding the number of seats are one seat for 35 men and one seat for 25 women. Many cities use five families per cubicle norm for deciding the number of cubicles. The entrance to the toilet must be prominent with adequate lighting on the approach road. There should be separate entry points for men and women and there should be provisions for the differently abled and aged from the community also. This can be achieved by erecting easy to use ramps. Adequate space must be provided 
in the areas meant for waiting, changing and child care. If the toilet units fall short of the community's requirements, users will face long queues and be tempted to defecate in the open. Children and elderly often have balancing problems and may have other special needs. Unless separate toilets are constructed, keeping in view their needs, they will defecate in the open. The elements in a community toilet normally should include separate toilet blocks for men and women with seats for differently abled and aged. Hand washing stations in men and women blocks, separate bathing units and places for washing clothes. Urinals in men's block, waiting or circulation area, water storage facility, storeroom for storing cleaning equipment. Besides, the interior designs of the toilets also need to follow some fundamental norms. For instance, the inner side of the toilet door must have locks or latches and hooks. There should be bins in each cubicle and a proper disposal mechanism for sanitary napkins wherever required. The windows and ventilators in the toilets must be such so as not to compromise with women's privacy. Some cities have also provided a living quarter for one operating staff, typically built over the toilet block. The toilets must be operational round the clock. It is a must to have women caretakers for maintenance of women's toilets. In case a charge is imposed on the user, the same should be prominently indicated at the toilet gates. Once you have sufficient number of households identified and the number of seats required in the community toilet, you look for available land according to the given specifications. The detailed design should be done after a land survey and after ensuring that the construction of toilets is legally permissible. The community must also be involved in deciding the location of the block. Now, let's look at the financing options for community toilets. The central government incentive for the construction of community toilets is in the form of 40% grant under VGF, that is Viability Gap Funding, for community toilet block construction. The remaining funds will have to be generated from other sources, such as the urban local body's own budget or a public-private partnership. The tentative costs of toilets, including superstructure, is approximately rupees 65,000 per seat. The cost per seat would vary depending upon the construction materials, quality of construction, type of treatment, technology adopted, and O and M for specified periods. Operations and maintenance of community toilets is a crucial component. Notably, all the community toilets constructed under the Swachh Bharat mission must have a minimum of five-year maintenance contract, whether the urban local body would maintain the block through its own staff or outsource it, or will the community take the responsibility of OM. The mode for ensuring O and M of the built block should be decided at the onset. Urban local bodies could also decide whether to levy a user fee or not that could help recover the OMM expenses. The user fees should be decided based on the ability to pay. The urban local body should ensure that it has adequate human resources for maintenance and supervision. Record of cleanliness activities must be maintained in digital format and wherever possible both in digital and print formats. Sudden inspections 
by higher officials should also be conducted. Now, let's talk about the technical aspects of the toilet construction. We have discussed different types of toilets in our last video on individual household toilets. The design and functional aspects of community toilets depends on the availability of resources and wastewater disposal. If the community toilet block is within 30 meters from an existing sewer line, only the toilet superstructure may be constructed and connected to the sewerage system. If a sewer line is not available within 30 meters, then the toilet should have an on-site sanitation system such as a septic tank or twin pit latrines or biodigesters. It is always a good idea to involve women in shaping and making the institutional arrangements such as selection of sites. It must be ensured that a community toilet has 24 hours of electricity supply. In case the power supply is irregular, alternate sources of light must be provided so that the toilet could be used at any time of the day. All the community toilets constructed should have adequate water supply arrangements. This could be through an overhead tank located on the top of the community block. If municipal water supply is not available, a toilet block can have its own borewell and pump. The toilet block should provide sufficient area for the users to move about or to wait. Poor ventilation causes foul smell and discourages users. Community blocks should have adequate skylighting and ventilation. In order to keep the users aware of essentials of cleanliness and hygiene, public education campaigns by the municipality and the toilet education materials must be displayed inside the toilets. Thus, we have covered almost all topics relating to community toilets in this training module. If you need to know more, please go to www.nbccindia.gov.in. Here you will find all the details about construction of community toilets. This is the last section of our training module. We will put ourselves to some test to find out how much did we learn from this training video. So, are you ready? Here comes the first question for you. How far should the community toilet be built? The choices are A. 700 meters B. 300 meters C. 150 meters and D. 900 meters What did I hear you say? Did you say C? 150 meters? Well, that is the correct answer. Now, let's move on to the next question. On your screen you have Question number two. The entry points for men and women should be A. Separate B. Same C. Depends upon whether the area is urban or rural and D. None of the above. What did you say? Did you say A? Well, that is actually the right answer. Good. Very well done. Okay. Time for the next question now. Here is question number three for you. A community toilet should be connected to a sewer line if it is within A. 300 meters B. 30 meters C. 100 meters and D. 500 meters. Well, again you have answered it correctly. The answer is B. That is within 30 meters. Okay? Let's move on. What should be done before constructing a community toilet? A. Planning B. Patenting C. Licensing 
and D, none of the above. What did I hear you say again? Did you say A, planning? Well, if you said that, the answer is right. That brings us to the end of this training video. I hope you enjoyed it and will put the knowledge that we have gathered from this training video to good use. So I, Biswajit Banerjee, will sign off for now and see you again in the next video. Till then, goodbye and take care.